It is such an honor to have you with your incredible breadth of experience. I think back to the first days that I joined the Providence family now nine years ago, and you were one of the first people as a leader who has done so much to just change and transform our organization and deliver the best practices and best services to our patients and to our clinicians and to all of our caregivers, really getting things done. Thank you so much, Dr. Gordon. I remember when I was thinking about this role and what it would mean to partner with you. And what I thought about was your vision and your passion. What inspired me was the work that you did at the Disney Family Cancer Center, really focusing on people. And not just this moment when they have cancer, but afterwards, because we know that cancer is that moment and you're gonna move beyond it and people wanna thrive. So I think about the programs that you've led and what we're gonna be able to do with these innovations that you're gonna to bring to the organization and to the community. We're gonna have the ability to accelerate discovery into care delivery for everybody. Our physicians are long-standing physicians in the community. It's not the revolving door that you get at the academic centers. I agree completely. And what I see, the St. John's Cancer Institute has been for decades a leader, not only in melanoma, but now in all cancers, and understanding the biology and how do we change that into just from basic science and a bench into therapy. We have this incredible hospital offering the absolute forefront in cancer care. What I want to do is bring those two sides of the house together. I see us as being able to grow our cancer program, and not only just here in Santa Monica, but to leverage everything that we're doing together to be able to serve our community at large with the very best practices. I love that you see my end-to-end, -end, the idea of finding somebody at risk all the way through that journey, should they get cancer, to their survivorship and their wellness at the end. And that this is what we want to deliver, a lifelong connection to our organization and to the care of our patients. That's right, and you know that human connection that differentiates us? Our job is going to be how do we leverage that expertise and resources across both of our campuses to optimize that so that our patients feel connected through that entire journey because we have all those resources and services here for them. So I'm really excited about building that with you and making sure that our, our patients and our families know that we're here to support them and we have those wraparound services academic institutions can't provide. Right, I do think that the high touch, high tech is really very different. To be able to care for a patient individually and so personally and to make them feel supported all the way through their care but to have every new technology, every surgical expertise, every medical therapy that you could get anywhere. If you travel throughout the nation, you can get that delivered right at home. Everybody knows you and will ease your way. I just love that for our patients and for our providers to be able to have so much satisfaction. It matters when you know your patients and you can care for them for years and years on end. And you know, our conversation earlier today that you said, hey, it really is important for our providers and our clinicians to come together and bring them together on a regular basis so they can have that connection and share the best practices and education so we're aware. Exactly. We're gonna be reaching out to everybody, learning from them, understanding what is the opportunities, and then planning that future together. A clinical trial should be available to a patient wherever they are. And that if that is something that we are doing here at the Cancer Institute, that we need to be able to leverage that across town so that a patient can access the very best in care. I also think that it's time that we put equal focus on early detection and prevention. How do we find patients at risk? And once we find them, we can get them into clinical trials. We can get them into early detection tests. We can offer them things that nobody else can. We have surgical expertise that is better than any place else. We have medical oncology and therapies and radiation that is the best in class. But we want to take that patient all the way through. We also want to emphasize that prevention is really what we want. We want no one to get cancer. So now the fun begins. 
We get to take inventory of all of the incredible assets that we have and start to look at how do we make this seamless for our patients, leverage it for our providers, get the most amount of research, command the national cancer stage. I think that's the other thing that's going to be really exciting is that when we bring the brightest minds, the biggest hearts, like you can't not be inspired.